Hi guys, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Sermondo Talks. My name is Christina and I'm here today with Nathan Hirsch, based in Orlando and founder of the online freelancer platform FreeUp. Let's jump right in and ask him a few questions. Perfect. So I'm here today with uh, Nathan Hirsch, who's based in Orlando and who's the founder of FreeUp. Hi, glad to have you on. Yeah, excited to be here. In one sentence, what is FreeUp? <laughs> We're a marketplace for pre-vetted virtual assistants, freelancers, and agencies. And how long have you been around for? This is about year four. We're, we're approaching year four, so midway through. Do you offer services solely to Amazon sellers or e-commerce in general? So even more than e-commerce, well, when we started free up, I mean, I was a long time Amazon seller. So we started going after Amazon sellers. I knew Amazon sellers. They, they all had the same hiring issues that I did. So when we opened up free up, we, we were a marketplace for Amazon VAs, Amazon freelancers. And what happened was those Amazon sellers, a lot of them sold on Shopify, sold on other places. And they started also telling their other friends in e-commerce. So all of a sudden we had all these e-commerce sellers signing up to use our platform and so we expanded and we started offering Walmart and eBay and Shopify. And from there, when you get outside of Amazon, because Amazon does a lot of marketing for you, people started needing marketing help. So we really expanded to marketing. Facebook ads became hot, Instagram, all that stuff. And then we said, you know what? We're offering these services anyway. Let's target the marketing community. So we started going after marketing influencers and marketing agencies. And so our core that we go after from an advertising side, because you can't go after everyone, is e-commerce and marketing, but market, the cool thing about marketing is it kind of trickles into everything else, right? If you're, if you're in the marketing space, real estate agency marketing, software companies need marketing. So we get lots of, of clients in all random industries, but from a targeting perspective, we go after marketing and e-commerce. What are the most popular categories on FreeUp? <laughs> Always my, my least favorite question. <laughs> only, only because we just get so many requests every day and they're all over the place and there's no rhyme or reason. I mean, standard Amazon stuff could be customer service. It could be listing. It could be Amazon PPC. If you're talking marketing, you've got Facebook ads. You've got specialists in, in all the social media channels, the Twitter, the Facebook, the Instagram. You've got content writing. I mean, we know content is king and, and content expands beyond just writing. I mean, it could be blog posts, but it could also be video editors and audio editors and graphic designers. And I mean, once you get into any business, you're talking about the bookkeeping and the customer service and the virtual assistant work. So there, there's so many different ways that, that you can use freelancers, virtual assistants and, and agencies. And I, I kind of like to break it down between the followers the doers and the experts where you've got people you hire to follow your system, your process. When you think of a, a virtual assistant, five to 10 bucks an hour, you've got the doers, the specialists, the, the graphic designers, the bookkeepers, the writers, and, and then you got the experts, the people that are bringing their own strategy to the table. It could be lead generation or marketing or social media or content. So it, it kind of goes a bunch, through a lot of different ranges. And how did you know which categories will be needed do you have your own experience with selling on amazon yeah i mean i, I was a long time amazon seller i started it in 2008 so i hired people to do everything back when i started there was no amazon software so there was a lot of manual processes that now you have software for and now you kind of hire people to complement the software so i i did have a lot of experience with amazon i i've never run a marketing agency so I've learned a lot about running a marketing agency just from talking to clients, talking to influencers and, and understanding what they need. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what I think that people need. It matters what, what they're actually requesting. So a lot of it is reading the market and, and adjusting accordingly. I mean, when we first started free up, Facebook ads were not as big as it is now. So we saw that was coming. We saw there was a need for it and we adjusted and we added a lot of Facebook ad experts. So as we go deeper and deeper, I'm sure more of that will keep happening. Awesome. And what would you say makes you different from other platforms like Fiverr or onlinejobs.ph? Yeah. So, I mean, we're different in, in a lot of ways. It, just the ones you mentioned, like onlinejobs.ph is only people in the Philippines. We have over a hundred skill sets, people from five to a hundred plus per hour, U.S. and non-U.S. Um, with us, we get thousands of applicants every week. Um, these are virtual assistants, freelancers, agencies from all over the world. We vet them for skill, attitude, and communication. The top 1% get onto our platform 
and then we make them available to people quickly whenever they need them. It's free to sign up. There's no monthly fee. There's no minimums. You don't have to browse. Put in a request. We fill it quickly. You can meet with them, interview them, ask for more options. You can hire them or click pass and provide us feedback, and we'll get you someone else based on that feedback. So it's pretty quick and efficient on the front end. And on the back end, we have 24-7 support in case you have even the smallest issue. I would put our support team against anyone out there. And we have a no turnover guarantee where freelancers on our platform rarely quit. But if they do, we cover replacement costs and get you a new person right away. So those are the four main differences, the, the pre-vetting, the speed, the, the customer service, and the protection. That's awesome because you already answered my uh, next question, what you would do when a user is not happy with your services. So you say you just replace the freelancer or the virtual assistant with another one. Yeah, I mean, it depends what the issue is. I mean, if someone has been working with the VA for four months and they're having some issues, we want to see if we can help and fix it, right? No one wants to just start over four months in. Now, if that's not possible or the VA is sick or they quit, then we're going to cover replacement costs and get you someone else. And it's kind of a fine line between it, like replacing people and getting better people or just helping educate either the client or the freelancer. I mean, we have a lot of best practices in place on the freelancer side to help make sure clients have a good experience. We have a Facebook group called Outsourcing Masters and a blog and a podcast where we understand we can get you good people, but if you don't know what to do with those people after the fact, it doesn't do you much good. So we try to provide a lot of content there and it's all about making sure both sides are happy and treated fairly. We're not, we're not really interested in making a quick buck off someone. We want to get you someone that you really like that helps you grow your business, that the freelancer likes working with you and that it's a win for everyone. If I talk to a user of yours, what would they say about your platform? Um, that our response time is really fast and we're always there to help. Hopefully they'll say that they've hired people with, with really good talent and that could do exactly what they needed and, and be reliable. Um, and, and communication is everything. I mean, that, that's the foundation of our platform is strong communication from, from me to my team, to the, the information in the software, to the actual freelancers and virtual assistants. We want strong communication across the board. Awesome. You seem uh, pretty enthusiastic about your business. Why did you decide to become self-employed? Yeah, I mean, I never wanted to work for someone else. I, my parents always made me get these summer jobs and I was working 40, 50 hours a week. My, my friends were all outside playing and, and I hated it. I felt trapped. I mean, I felt like I didn't have freedom. I, I couldn't control anything. I couldn't make my own decisions. And, and when I got to college, I kind of just looked at it as a ticking clock. I had four years to start my own business or I was going to go into the real world and, and get, have bills and responsibilities and, and never get out. So I, I had an opportunity with Amazon before everyone else. I, I feel like I took advantage of that opportunity and, and I am thankful every day. I mean, there, there's so many entrepreneurs with great ideas that for whatever reason, you just don't succeed. And, and I know that, that I've been lucky. I, I've had people that, that make me real, look really good by hiring really intelligent, smart, hardworking people that help grow these businesses. And, and I'm just in, in a very fortunate situation where I, I love what I do. I, I love that we paid out $7 million to freelancers last year and people show me their houses and their cars and how they were able to provide for their families. And on the flip side, I'm helping entrepreneurs achieve their dream and grow their business and, and whatever business they're passionate about. So it's a lot more fun than, than pushing baby products on, on Amazon. And, and I, I like it a lot. Are there also things that you don't like about your job? Yeah, I mean, it gets nitpicky, right? Because there's so many things you can complain about, but overall life's pretty good. I mean, do I love when an issue comes up on a Saturday night? Or I mean, last weekend, my, my weekend assistant got sick. She's pregnant and she had a serious health issue on Saturday morning. So I spent the first hour of a Saturday morning just reorganizing the schedule and, and getting people to work. Is that what I wanted to be doing on a Saturday? No, I, I probably needed a, a break from the computer after working all week. But I mean, stuff like that doesn't happen that often. And, and the overall good, the, the freedom, the flexibility, the fact that I can be anywhere at any given time and I don't have to report to anyone, to, to me, that outweighs a lot of the cons. A lot of Amazon sellers struggle with the work-life balance. Um, do you follow a certain schedule? Like, do you always say like, I take Sundays off no matter what, or would you say you work every day? <laughs> I don't work every day, but I don't have a, a, a system where it's like Sunday, you will 100% be off. <laughs> um, it, it really depends. I mean, 
for example, this Thursday through Sunday, I'm going to be at a bachelor party in uh, New Orleans. So I, my team knows that from 4 p.m. until Sunday that they're not going to contact me for any reason. And part of the cool thing is I have a business partner, Connor, and when he travels and he's on vacation, the people, his people come to me and vice versa. So we do allow each other to, to kind of get breaks, to get completely away from the business. But if I'm hanging out on a Saturday and I have nothing to do and, and my assistant messages me because they have a question, I'm going I'm to respond to that nine times out of 10. There might be certain days where I'm burnt out and I'm like, I just needed to get away from my computer. It, it just depends what's going on in life and what's going on with my mentality. And did we have a hard week or an easy week? Or do we have a big project we're working on? I mean, we're in the third quarter right now. This is our, our busy time. People hire a lot preparing for the fourth quarter. So I'm probably taking less time off this quarter than maybe I am in the middle of the summer where everyone's traveling and no one's really hiring people anyway. Yeah. Um, you mentioned before that you enjoy helping others. That is what fulfills you. If I gave you $10,000 to give to charity, which charity would you give it to? Ooh, good question. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm all about animals and, and, and children. I mean, to me, that, that's how you give back. A any type of adoption agency, any type of, of animal shelter. I have two dogs that are both adopted. To, to me, that's how you, you really give back. They're, those are, those are, are people or animals that, that don't have a, a say in anything. They, don't, they can't make decisions to help themselves. They were put in a bad situation. And if you can help even, even someone a little bit, just get a head start, get back on their feet or provide some pl one, a, a place to live or a place that has the resources for them to survive, to me, that, that's where my heart's at. Oh, that's a nice answer. Um, which kind of superpower would you like to have if you could have any? <laughs> Um, whew, that's a good one. I feel like everyone says fly, but I'm scared of heights. So that's kind of, out. <laughs> <of the way. laughs> um, I don't know, maybe, maybe the ability to, to read people's minds. I mean, I, I, I find human psychology so fascinating, right? I mean, the difference between like a good sale and a bad sale or even customer service, it's all about figuring out what people want. Right. And I, when I can't figure out what someone wants, I struggle a lot. It's really tough for me to work with those people. And, and I encourage people to not work with people that you don't know what they want. So I think sometimes I, I like to just get in the mind of someone that I can't understand, that I can't get my message across to and, and figure, understand what they're thinking. And to me, that's powerful. And if you had the superpower to travel back in time, what would you say to your five year younger self? <laughs> Um, just stop caring what people think about you. I mean, I, when I started on Amazon, people thought I was crazy. I was selling baby products. I was a 20 year old single college guy. And, and I was listening to a lot of feedback, a lot of chirping from a lot of different people, friends, family, uh, just random people that had nothing to do with my target market or my business. And once I, I, I woke up one day and I was like, you know what, I'm just blocking all of it out. I'm, it, before it was kind of like me feeling it out, right? Like, is this okay? Is this what I should do? And, and then it was just like, you know what? This is what I'm going for. This is my dream. This is my passion and, and everything else gets blocked out. Um, I, you might follow me on social media, but I mean, if anything goes even a little bit negative, I'm deleting it. I'm blocking that person. I, I don't have time for, for, for any of that in my life right now. I mean, life's short. Surround yourself with positive people that are supportive and, and give back in that same positive, supportive way. Did you ever have a time where you wanted to quit? <laughs> Um, the only time that I, I wouldn't say I wanted to quit, but I, I was pretty devastated and, and a lot of thoughts were going through my mind. Um, I, I made a pretty bad business decision early on around year one of my Amazon business. I hired this one person and I taught him how to do everything in the business. I taught him how to do customer service, listing orders. And I spent six months training this person. And At the end, it was awesome. He could run my whole business. I was sleeping better at night. I, I was less stressed out. And on the flip side with one manufacturer, I did the same thing. I had one manufacturer who was doing a lot of my sales. And I said, you know what? I don't care about the other ones. Let's just focus on this one. So I have this business on autopilot. I have one manufacturer crushing it. I have one person running everything. Uh, money's flowing in and, and I'm on the top of the world. I'm this 21-year-old kid running this business. And I take my first vacation in over a year and I go to Myrtle Beach. And on my first day at Myrtle Beach, I get three phone calls. The first from my, the person I hired, my manager telling me he was quitting on me. The second from my manufacturer telling me that they were dropping me. And the third from my accountant 
telling me that someone had filed a fake tax return in my name, had stolen my identity, and I was going to have to deal with that mess when I got back. Whoa. So, yeah, I went from like this unbelievable high to everything I just worked for for the past year and a half is gone, and I need to start all over again. And I was devastated. I took a few days. I had like three days left of my vacation, and I drank a lot, and, and I didn't <laughs> really know what to do. And then I got back, and I said, all right, what did I learn from this? I learned that you have to diversify. That was the biggest lesson, and I really had to build the business back up from scratch. So I, I was still a sophomore at the time. So I, I mean, if I was a senior and, and I was about to graduate, I think things might've been different. I might've gone out and gotten a real job, but I, I pretty much looked at it and said, how much money do I have? What resources do I have? Let's go, let's go all out one more time. And we ended up building the business back up from scratch. So now you're a pretty successful entrepreneur. Um, what do you like to spend your money on? More like memories or material things? <laughs> More like memories. I, I don't really buy a lot of stuff. I mean, I still have a, a 2011 Subaru that I bought when I first like made, when I first paid off all my student loans, that was my, my next purchase after that was the car. And I've had it ever since. Um, I mean, I have like, like a condo that I purchased and stuff like that, but um, most of the stuff is traveling. I mean, I, I just got back from Croatia. I'm going to New Orleans. I've got a trip to Boston. I mean, I, I like to travel. I like to try new food. I like to, to meet with people and, and hang out. I mean, it doesn't, I don't, I don't need a $200 dinner to, to be happy. I, I can, I, I don't know. I'm a pretty chill person. I wear short, um, I wear shorts and a t-shirt pretty much every day. You, you probably won't find me in a tie or nice clothes. And that's kind of the, the lifestyle that I live. You're like the Mark Zuckerberg of the Amazon industry. <laughs> I, I don't think I'm the Mark Zuckerberg of the Amazon industry, but I appreciate you telling you saying that. <laughs> Having the same three t-shirts and just three pants. So you don't have to think about what to wear. Yeah, it was funny. I, I forget what trip I was on, but someone's like, uh, he's like, all right, Nate, like, what are you bringing? I was like, you see these shorts? I, I've got five different versions of this. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of um, Mark Zuckerberg, let's stay with famous people. If you could hire any famous person in the world to work for you at FreeUp, who would that be and why? <laughs> to work for me? I, I wouldn't hire any entrepreneur to, to work for me. Those are the, the worst hires. Don't hire, um, don't hire people that are, that are running big businesses. I mean, um, but all that. But I mean, if there's one person that I'd want to work with on a day to day, it's Jeff Bezos. I mean, the Amazon guy, you, there's so much you can learn from him. I feel like he's years ahead of, of everyone else. He, he's got the, the mentality of, of customer service. He's got the mentality of, of harsh, brutal decisions that he just makes without, without second guessing himself. And that's the kind of person that, that I want to work with. Probably uh, me mentoring from, or learning from him, not the other way around. Um, so you're also on a lot of shows, a lot of uh, podcasts, you bring out a lot of content in the, in the blog area. Are there any free resources that you would recommend to any Amazon seller? Yeah, if you go in my Facebook group, Outsourcing Masters, we have a guide, uh, 36, I forget the exact name, 36 things to hire for an Amazon business or 36 virtual assistants for an Amazon business. And we have a, a bunch of different Amazon guides there that can help you get on the right track. It's all stuff that we've seen from the sellers that use our platform, talking to bigger sellers in the space. Um, on our podcast, we interview six, seven figure, eight figure Amazon um, e-commerce marketing agencies that um, are, are there all scaling remote and we want to learn from them. So we put out a lot of content there to just help people learn from the best. I mean, that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to learn from people that, that are bigger, from me, that bigger than me. Awesome. Then I'm already at my last question. Can you name three tips that you would give to any Amazon seller out there? Yeah. So the gurus are great. I work with a lot of them. There's a lot of people who really have genuine interest in helping people. At the same time, you have to take it. You have to take certain information and apply it to your business. What works for, for the big guru, it doesn't necessarily work for your business. You should be trying lots of different things and see what actually applies to your business. And I think that's where a lot of people mess up. They, they say, oh, this person had success doing this. It means I have to do it and I have to do it that way. It's no, let's take that information. It's great information and let's tweak it and try to apply it for my business and do trial and error. The second tip would be to focus on building your brand. We're in the day and age of building brands. That's, you shouldn't think of yourself as an Amazon seller. You should think of yourself as a business and Amazon is one of your channels. It's fine if Amazon is your main channel, but if you're not growing your brand and, and having an audience and, and growing that over time, it's going to be a very short-term reward. The people that last are growing the brand, 
And step three is content. You've got to be putting out content consistently. If you're selling a, a, a fork for grilling, then you should be putting out content about the best barbecues or the best, the best seasonings, all the stuff around that. And if you can put out great content consistently, you can have a lot of success in the e-commerce space. Awesome. That's some valuable advice. Um, and I want to thank you for being on our show and taking the time to answer all of my questions. It was a pleasure having you here. Yeah, thanks for having me. This was great. All right, guys, that's it. That was my interview with Nathan. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned some valuable things that you can apply to your own business. If you're interested in the free app platform, I put the link in the description. You can also find any other service provider you may need in order to grow your Amazon business on sermonda.com. Check it out and I see you guys next time.